Hey everybody and welcome back, certainly glad you could join me today. In this video we're going to look at how to turn non-deforce hair into deforce hair. Now this technique is going to vary depending on the hairstyle that you use, but there's a lot of misinformation out there including tutorials recently made by other people that kind of either don't tell you the full story or they're just totally wrong so <laughs> let's jump into this then before i get started i just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out and an even bigger thank you to my patrons and members your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak if you are interested in supporting the channel feel free to either visit the patreon link in the description below or simply join the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button so here we've got a simple ponytail and this is probably the easiest kind of hair to work with because it's tied back so the only hair that's actually going to move is the ponytail and maybe the bangs but we'll look at the structure of the hair and see what we can do so what we want to do first is we're probably going to want to hide our character and we can just hide all the clothes but we can leave them there as well it's no big deal but i'm just going to hide the shirt and the bra just so that i can see the whole hairstyle a little bit better now if we come out of texture shaded mode and we go into uh, one of the wireframe modes so we can go into uh, wire shaded mode you can see it's very very difficult to see anything <laughs> so we'll come out of that and we'll just go back into uh, smooth shaded it's not going to have any real effect on what we're doing you can see there are sort of um these are strands but there's also a lot of uh, ribbons in there as well so all we really want is the ponytail to move with deforce first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to edit object geometry and we're going to add modify and dynamic surface like that and now when we go into our simulation tabs we can see that there is in fact information there so before we do anything else, we need to set the hair so that only the ponytail is going to be affected by deforce. Otherwise, this is all going to go hideously, hideously wrong. Now that we've got our weight map tool selected, what we need to do is we're going to go to create deforce modifier weight node like that. And we're just going to hit accept and then that will appear in there. So now we've got the weight modifier node selected. We can come into our tool settings in our weight map here, add the map to our tool. And then when we come back into here, you can see that we've got a weight map. So now we've got our weight map selected. What we're going to do is come into our tool settings and we're just going to yank the sensitivity right up like that. And we're going to switch to face selection or polygon selection. And that just means that we can deselect these things much much more quickly and we're basically just going to deselect everything that's not part of the ponytail and this might dependent on the complexity of the hair this might take you a little while but just bear with it this is a challenge for every computer that you do it on because of the sheer number of vertices and faces that you're basically working with in a hairstyle in particular so just be patient with it work your way through and of course remembering that you're holding down the alt key to deselect and while i'm um, running through this i wanted to comment on a few things a few misnomers or a few a few uh, i want to say nonsense things that i've heard other people saying firstly the quality of hair does not depend on whether or not there's a hair cap a hair cap is simply something that some content creators use in order to create the hair itself they have a, a hair cap which they use to model so it basically just controls where their hairline is and quite a lot of the time they'll either weld the hair strands to the hair cap in order to allow them to make the entire hair surface deforce compatible or sometimes they'll just be lazy and forget to take it out but the quality of hair has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not there is a hair cap that's just nonsense i'm very sorry to anybody who may believe that's the case but it's just not 
So you need to be quite thorough and just make sure that you get rid of all of the hair. I know that you could use the marquee selection tool, but that's a bit heavy handed for what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of give this a little bit of a free hand feel. Now this step that we're doing now, dependent on whether or not the hair is actually welded to the skull cap or not, may be skippable, but personally I would double check it just in case. So as you can see, we've got like the tips of the bangs, still kind of a little bit of deforce going on there. And of course, if you want to do a really thorough job of this, you're going to have to learn to be patient. And it's the same with anything in Dust Studio. There's no quick fix solution for anything, really. It really is a case of just learning to work your way slowly, making the assets that you want to make, getting everything working the way you want it to work, and then learning how to save those items so that you can play around with them again later without having to do this every time. Remember, you've only got to do this once, and then you can save this out as your own wearables preset and or save save the style as your own kind of version of it and then you you can reload this into the scene every time so this isn't something you're going to have to do every single time you want to convert hair to deforce because it's just a case of saving it out and again bearing in mind that hair tends to have quite a lot of polygons in it of all of the things that you're going to work with in Dash Studio, hair is going to be one of the most complicated just because of the sheer number of faces and things like that in there. So in this hairstyle, we're quite fortunate because we don't want the actual top of the hair to move at all. We're only interested in the bangs and the ponytail. But the same method can be applied to basically anything. What you need to do is make sure that the, the roots, the bits that you want to stay glued to the character's head, the weight map doesn't have any influence on those areas. And then just have the bits that you want to be able to move, have them red. And then you don't have to worry about welding vertices to skull caps and all that sort of thing. That just makes life a bit easier if the dev hasn't made it uh, deforce compatible so this hairstyle is now basically ready to go i reckon i think i might have missed a little spot there just give that a quick paint over so that's ready to go now i'm not actually going to run the simulation uh, on this particular hairstyle because this is a very complex hairstyle as you could see when i was editing the weight map and so running a simulation on this would take quite a long time which i'm sure none of you want to sit through but that's the basic technique and then if we go into the surfaces tab of our summer side tail hair you can see that there's loads and loads of different surfaces but if you go into any of them then there will be a simulation tab and you can edit the properties of each one to match whatever you want. Um, I'd advise you to kind of visit one of my other DeForce tutorials where we go through those surface properties very briefly to get the properties in that one. This is more just about sorting out the weight map, but this, this kind of works with every different hairstyle that isn't DeForce compatible. So let's just throw in a, another one on there. We need to make sure that we've got our character selected. So again, in this hairstyle, you can see that there's no deforce modifiers on there. But the beauty of this particular hairstyle is that it comes in three different items. So let's say we just want to edit the bangs. We've got the bangs there selected and we can actually object edit geometry deforce dynamic surface like that. And then we can go into our weight map editor and we're going to create new deforce modifier weight node and we hit accept and then it just creates it on the on the bangs so we come across again we're going to add that map to there like so and then when we come back across you can see that the bangs are now selected and they are again it's again strand based hair this one so all we're going to do is we're going to hold down the alt key and we're just going to paint along the top here to make sure that the roots of those bangs are not going to move anywhere just being careful not to deselect too much. We just want the bits that are attached to the head. And obviously you can get in closer and you can get this a little bit tidier if you want to. So you can reselect some of those bits and pieces that you do want to move so that we've got minimal stiffness, I want to say. Because obviously if you're applying this technique, you want the very very little bits that are attached to the head to stay put but the rest of it you want to be able to move freely otherwise it's going to look really unrealistic 
again that would work just fine and again you don't need to see me actually run the simulator in this to know that it's going to work just fine and it really is a case of just making sure that your weight maps are good and having a little bit of an experiment and remembering the most important things firstly the bits that are attached to the head are the bits that need to be un -weight mapped so that they are kind of stay put and the rest of the hair the bits that you do want to move need to have basically full deforce weight mapping on them and then you can adjust the properties and experiment to get the best results and obviously the complexity of the hair is going to impact how long this is going to take firstly how long it's going to take you to weight map and then how long it's going to take you to run the simulation in strand based hair it's typically going to take a lot longer because every single strand has got multiple vertices that need to be calculated whereas in strip based hair there's a lot less geometry for deforce to have to think about i hope you found that useful thank you very much for watching i look forward to seeing you in the next video let me know what you think in the comments below and smash like see you next time bye bye